in this chapter we're going to talk about gases and gas behavior and one of the first properties of gases that we want to talk about is pressure so pressure is force per unit area and one of the classic physics things that people learn about pressure is if we look at this elephant which weighs tons and this skater who weighs maybe 100 pounds and we look at the pressure that they exert on the earth the skater actually exhibits exerts more pressure and the reason for that is the elephant's feet are have more area than the skater's blade so the skater's blade has such a small area that even though their mass is much lower they're actually exerting more uh, force so pressure is force per unit area and in what we're going to figure out uh, slightly later in this chapter is that gases also exert pressure. So here is an example of how a gas exerts pressure. And gas exerts pressure of 14.7 pounds of pressure on one square inch. This is called 14.7 pounds per square inch, which you may have heard of as referred to as PSI. So 14.7 PSI um, is 14.7 pounds per square inch. If you fill your tires, for example, the gauge you use might be in units of PSI um, in the United States. So here we have how gas exerts pressure. You can think about this gas as a column of air. And this column of air puts a force. We don't actually feel this force. Right now, 14.7 pounds per square inch of your body is being observed, exerted on you. But we're kind of used to it, or if you will, so therefore we don't actually feel it. So this is approximately having um, a bowling ball uh, sitting on your thumb. Of course, you would also have the air and the bowling ball. So that's basically that. How do gases actually exert pressure? As we've talked about in several other uh, chapters in this course, molecules at any temperature above absolute zero are moving. Well, in the case of a gas, the molecules have a lot of freedom, and they're very far apart from each other, but they are moving. So these gas molecules can bounce into each other, and as well as the sides of the container. When they hit the sides of the container, as shown with these yellow highlights here, they exert a pressure. And because all the molecules are moving, and there are lots of these molecules, as they hit against the walls of the container, they exert a measurable pressure. And in fact, one atmosphere of pressure is about 14.7 pounds of pressure per square inch. Now, I should note that we don't use PSI, pounds per square inch, as a common unit in chemistry. And in a minute, we'll talk about some of the more common units that we do use. If we look here at heat, if we apply heat, what happens? Well, remember that temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy, or the energy of motion. So when we heat it up, the molecules start to move faster. Therefore, they have more kinetic energy slash a greater temperature. When they have a greater temperature, they do two things. One, they hit the walls of the container more often because they're moving faster. And two, they hit the walls of the container harder because they're moving faster. So the pressure inside of this hot vessel is much higher than the pressure inside of this cold vessel. And if you think about throwing a hairspray container into a fire, okay, which is a terrible idea, what happens? Well, what happens is the molecules move faster and faster and faster. And at some point, they have enough force to actually rip apart the container. And then you get kind of a little explosion that occurs, um, which can be very dangerous. So we don't want to throw um, hairspray containers into the fire. Here's another example of the difference in pressure with different temperatures, a hot air balloon. In a hot air balloon, we heat the gas using a furnace. The hot gas has a lower pressure than the um, cold gas. And in this case, the hot gas has a lower pressure because the molecules are bouncing into each, into each other and therefore they're moving um, apart. I shouldn't say it has a lower pressure. It has a higher temperature and therefore a lower density. So as these um, molecules hit apart and they're more spread apart from each other, they have a lower density. Since this has the air inside of the balloon has a lower density than the air in the atmosphere, 
the balloon rises. And that's basically what's going on here. And again, it's not that it has a lower pressure, it's that it has a, um, a lower density. Atmospheric pressure can also come into play with areas of high pressure and areas of low pressure, which can cause uh, weather patterns. Um, so air will move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, which can cause wind and storms and things like this. I don't know a lot about the weather, um, but th these regional pressure differences um, are a factor, a major factor in the weather. So we've talked a little bit about pressure here. Now let's talk about how one might actually measure pressure. And what we use uh, to measure pressure is a barometer. And a barometer is a device that is filled with mercury. So if you notice here, this is actually wrong. This should be 760 millimeters of mercury, not 790 millimeters of mercury. But right here, if this is open to the atmosphere, the air is hitting this and applying force. In this tube, you have a vacuum. And in science, a vacuum means the absence of air or empty space, um, if you will. So this is just empty space. So there's no mercury or no air hitting on the surface of this mercury. What happens is this mercury rises up 760, not 790 millimeters when, because the air is pushing down on this surface. This is a straw, if you will, down in it. And the air is not pushing down on this surface. So the mercury rises. This is exactly how a straw works if this were a cup. Basically what happens is you use your lungs to evacuate the air in the top of the straw. The liquid um, air pressure is pushing down on the surface of the liquid, but it's not pushing down as hard on where the straw is, where you've evacuated some of the air. So the liquid rises up through the straw and you can drink it. If one were to make a barometer out of mercury, or excuse me, out of water, which is roughly 13 times less dense than air, then what you find is the height of the barometer is almost 34 feet. So this is a much, much larger distance. The reason we don't make barometers out of water is two reasons. One, water will tend to go into this vacuum and exert some pressure depending on the temperature of the water. The other reason is this is like you'd have to go up on the roof of a three-story building uh, to read the barometer. So having it only be a few feet tall is a lot more convenient than having it be 33 feet three feet tall. So this is how one can measure the pressure of the atmosphere. Believe it or not, in chemistry, the pressure of the atmosphere comes up sometimes um, because we do different reactions at atmospheric pressure and we interact with gases often at atmospheric pressure and not in vacuums. So here are just some units of uh, pressure. Kind of the metric unit is the Pascal. Um, the ones that we use in this course are the atmosphere and the tor, or millimeters of mercury. These are the same thing. Tor is after uh, Torricelli, who was the inventor of this um, unit and the inventor of the barometer. I guess he was the inventor of the barometer, so the unit was named after him. Um, and millimeters of mercury is the same thing. Again, we usually measure gas pressure with mercury because it's convenient to have something that's you know two and a half feet tall as opposed to something that's 33 feet tall. We already talked about PSI, pounds per square inch. There's also a unit called a bar. And if you look at uh, the weather, like on your on a phone in the United States, you find that inches of mercury is um, a common uh, unit of pressure. So you can see if it's a high pressure day or a low pressure day based on the inches of mercury, just because we use inches here instead of millimeters. So these are some common units of pressure, but it's important to note that we only really use two of them in this course. We use the atmosphere and we use the tor. And it, I don't like to write it this way, but what I like to write is 760 tor equals one atmosphere. But it's also true that one atmosphere equals one seven, or excuse me, one tor equals one 760th of an atmosphere. So what I'd like to do now is switch over to the um, nodes and look at how we can convert from tor to atmosphere and atmosphere to tor. So again, these are the common units of pressure that we use in this course. And you absolutely need to know that one atmosphere equals 760 tor. Remember that one atmosphere of pressure will push mercury up 760 millimeters. So that's where this comes from. Also note that on any given day, it may not be exactly one atmosphere of pressure. This is first of all at sea level, and it's kind of a normal pressure day. And as we talked about with the uh, weather changes, uh, pressures do change. 
However, this is the standard. So it says, how many atmospheres is 844 torr? Well, if we start with 844 torr times, we want torr to cancel out, so we put 760 torr on the bottom and one atmosphere on the top. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, round to three sig figs, and we get 1.11 atmospheres. We may need to convert the other way sometimes. It says how many tours is 2.1 2 atmospheres? Well, we take 2.1 atmospheres. This time we put the one atmosphere on the bottom and the 760 tour on the top. And when we do that math, we get 1600 tour if we round to two significant figures. So this is converting atmospheres to tor and tor to atmospheres and again these are the important units of pressure that you need to be familiar with. So now I'm going to switch back over uh, to the lecture notes. Another way that we can measure pressure is to measure relative pressures and we can use these um, J-tubes to do that. So here we have a gas in this in this uh, device and we want to measure the pressure of this gas. Well in this case this is closed end so this is a vacuum. So when we open this stopcock this gas fills this tube. This raises the height of mercury. The pressure of the gas is equal to the height of this mercury. If it pushes it up 760 millimeters then it's one atmosphere. If it pushes it up a thousand millimeters we could calculate how many atmospheres it is. In this case, when we this case, we have an open end, so we already have 760 millimeters of mercury pushing this way. Now, when we open the stopcock, this actually goes down. So what's happening is the atmosphere is actually pushing on this mercury more than this gas. If we look at this height um, that this pushes up the mercury, if we take 760 millimeters, the pressure of this. Um, and then we subtract off this difference in height, we can find the pressure of this gas, which of course will be less than 760 millimeters of mercury um, because it's pushed down in this direction. We can have the opposite case as well. In this case, the mercury is pushed up in this direction. And basically, th this uh, gray line here, this one should be down here. So in this case, um, what's happening is, it's actually this is the height based on how this is drawn. Sorry, let me start over on this one so it makes sense. In this case, the H should be drawn up here. This is a mistake, but when you open this pressure of gas, it pushes the mercury up. When it pushes the mercury up, it's pushing up not only the mercury, but it's also pushing up the atmosphere. And how do we know this? Because it's an open end. When you have an open end, it's also pushing on the atmosphere. When you have a closed end, it's only pushing on the mercury. So in this case, the pressure of the gas would be the atmospheric pressure plus this height here. This is labeled incorrectly, as I said before. This, this one is actually labeled for this one. Now let's look at a couple of examples where we actually can figure out what the, what the um, pressure is. So the first thing we want to notice is whether this is an open end or a closed end. And in this case, it's a closed end. When it's a closed end, we don't need to consider the atmospheric pressure because it's closed. We only need to consider the mercury height. So in this case, this gas is pushing the mercury up 26.4 centimeters. Remember that a tor is a millimeter of mercury. So one uh, centimeter equals 10 milliliter, uh, millimeters. Therefore, this is 264 millimeters multiplied by 10. So this is 264 tor. If we divide that by 760, we get 0.347 atmospheres. Let's look at another example. In this case, we have an open end. So we already have 760 millimeters of mercury pushing down here. And this gas can not only push up those 760 millimeters of mercury, they can also push up 13, it can also push up 13.7 more centimeters. Well, we need to multiply this by 10 to convert it to millimeters. What is the pressure of this gas? It's the 13.7 centimeters, which is 137 torr, or 137 millimeters, plus 760, the pressure of the atmosphere. This equals 897 torr. 
if we divide that by um, 760, we get 1.18 atmospheres. So in this uh, section, we've discussed pressure, what it is, how it works, and stuff like this, some of the units, and why gases exert pressure. In the next section, we're going to look at some of the other properties of gases, such as their volume, their temperature, and the amount of gas that is in a sample.